Greetings viewers, I am Eric the Car Guy and I'm also known as ETCG1 when I post videos on this channel and I have two channels so I confuse you when I say things like, hey, if it's your birthday, happy birthday, please enjoy this digital cake. I only do that on ETCG1, by the way. Today we have something a little special on ETCG1. We're gonna get outside the shop, we're gonna do some stuff. Uh, those of you that have been following along know that, uh, well, I've been trying to set my truck up for the possibility of bringing back the 1951 Chevy that my dad is going to give me sometime in the not too distant future. He also gave me this 1990 C1500 truck, which I went through and did a whole series and build on and all that kind of thing. But most recently, I added a set of airbags in the back. And the reason I did that is I recently drove to Indianapolis with a car hauler, very similar to the one that I'm sitting on now to pick up a 2000 Honda Civic. Uh, to harvest an engine and transmission from for my son. Well, I did that as a sort of practice run. Uh, the drive from Cincinnati to Indianapolis is only about a couple of hours. It's also a nice flat, straight thing. So it was a really good test bed in my mind. During that test, I found that, well, the truck was, the suspension on the truck, since I've lowered the rear four inches and the front two inches, had sort of sagged and, and almost bottomed out while hauling that uh, car. So what I thought I'd do in this video is cover my experiences after the installation of these airbags to see how this thing does hauling my 2000 uh, Acura Integra uh, because the 2000 Civic doesn't have an engine in it, but they weigh about the same. Uh, I want to start with a lighter vehicle, but if it's able to handle a light vehicle like that, I think it can be reasonable to assume that I can handle something heavier like that 51 Chevy. So. That's the purpose of this video, to sort of test and try out these new airbags on the truck to see the effect on towing, if it's better, if it's worse, if it's something that I feel confident enough to haul something maybe a little bit heavier like that 51 Chevy as opposed to, well, a Civic or an Integra. Stick around, it's gonna be fun. Now I'm gonna start out by saying that since I've been renting these trailers, I've been backing them up in the shop behind these lift posts and there's very little room on either side and it certainly gave me a lot of practice backing up and it takes me a couple of times to get it but less the more i do it one tip that my dad gave me who's had extensive experience driving things and backing up and that kind of thing was to put your hand on the bottom of the steering wheel when backing up and honestly really helped me and sort of you know gave me a better feel for uh driving backwards and keeping the trailer where i want it to go let's get this car loaded up and go for a drive Now, a lot of people mentioned my positioning of the Civic on the, in the last video. And as you can see, I've, I've positioned the uh, Integra a little farther back. But the truth is, you don't want too much weight on the back of the trailer. That'll make it fishtail or make it unstable. You actually want, like, I think about 60% of the weight before the axles, which is where the engine and everything is right now. So I'm pretty happy with this placement. I'm pretty happy that it's tied down. Now let's air up the airbags and go for a drive. I don't have an exact PSI to inflate to, but let's see where they're at. Cause I've noticed that, well, when I left to pick up the trailer, I had them inflated to five PSI, but when I came back, they were at 20 and I suspect that's because of the weight of the trailer. Yeah, right now I'm at about 26 PSI. Maximum PSI is hundred, but I'm just gonna take it up to 40 and see what it does. <laughs> It doesn't take much to inflate these bags. Not much at all, really. It actually looks pretty good. It's somewhat deceptive here because it's kind of on a slope. You know what? I'm going to split the difference at 50 uh, just because I'd like to see it up just a little bit more. But I think we'll call it good at 50 and take it out. All right, that's 50 PSI in the bags. Let's see what that does. Something I want to cover real quick uh, during my airbag installation video, many people suggested that instead of having two uh, Schrader valves in the back, that I get a Y connection and just make one Schrader valve and raise the back of the truck uh, simultaneously. I didn't want to do that, mainly because I wanted to be able to adjust the ride height independently on each side. So that's why I opted to do it this way. And for example, the fuel tank is on this side of the truck. It's a 25 gallon tank and fuel weighs about six, seven pounds per gallon. It doesn't take a lot of math to figure out that's pretty sticking heavy and that will weigh the truck down on the driver's side along with my weight in the driver's seat. 
So with that, or if I have an unlo uneven load in the bed of the truck, I can compensate for that individually with the way I have it set up here. Here we go. I'm gonna crank the trailer brakes up a little bit to like five or six. Right now they're on uh, two, right around two. Feels better already. Like, and I'm not even on the road yet and it feels better already. I, this is, with the suspension knob bottomed out, this is a world of difference. So much different. I mean, yeah, there's a load back there, but I don't feel like it's driving me. I feel like I'm hauling it. Let's get it out on the highway and see how it does. Yeah. I can tow with this truck. <laughs> yeah, Civic or Integra, no problem. <laughs> One thing about towing and having a car on the car trailer freaks me out a little bit because I look up in the rear view mirror, I'm like, ah, stop following me so close. <laughs> no, it's, it's just the car. It's just the car that you put there, Eric. Relax. That feels good, trailer brake wise. I've got it on, uh, I think it was like five or six. And that'll vary depending upon your system, I guess. For those of you in Europe that have completely different setup, this is an electronic setup and you sort of dial, dial in the amount of braking you want from the trailer. Highway time. This is a completely different experience. Completely different. With the back end of the truck squatted down, the front end of the truck is light. So steering is sketch, really sketchy. So it doesn't, it doesn't feel solid. But with the back end up and the weight placed more properly, for lack of a better term, it feels right. I mean, no problems. Now granted, this is still not a very heavy car, and I'd say my dad's 51 has a good, well, 2,000 pounds on it. So that is significant. And I'd say that'd be at the top of the limit, but I'm kind of rethinking now whether or not renting another truck to do that job is necessary because you know, there's a load back there, but it doesn't feel like it's really bringing me down. Conclusion, airbags are the way to go. If you're gonna increase the load hauling capability of your truck, airbags are the way to go. No substitute for a longer wheelbase though. That would help considerably. Next to that rear stabilizer bar, this is the best upgrade I've done to the truck, easily. Uh, I'm hearing some pingy stuff. I hear some possible detonation, pre-ignition kind of stuff. I run it kind of lean at cruise, but with towing, I think I'm gonna richen it up a little bit. All right, let's turn around and head back. Let's pull some timing out of that. I've got it at 36 degrees. I'm gonna pull it down to 34. And then as far as my uh, air fuel for cruise, right now I've got it at 14.2. I'm gonna bring that down to 13.7. So I made it a little richer and I took a little bit of timing out of it. Let's see what that does. Trans temp is 150, engine temp is 190, oil pressure is 30 at idle. Voltage is 13 and a half. Those adjustments helped. I was hearing a little bit of pinging before. We're gonna find out when I pull this hill up here, but it seems happier. So a little less timing, a little more fuel. And that's total timing, by the way. Way better. No more pinging. Pulling the same hill. So a little richer, a little less timing. That's the formula. I wish there was a way that I could plug that map into the tablet and I could just choose 
I could have like a towing tune and a regular driving tune. That'd be nice. Let's see if I can back it in on the lift. This situation could not have been more different than the first time I did this. I came back in with shop air on this level surface. I was actually able to level everything out at 55 PSI according to that gauge. You can clearly see the stance of the truck is very different. And the suspension can work and I can steer it and it, it just doesn't feel as unstable as it did the first time I towed with it. Check out the distance between the bump stop and the top of the axle. This is so much different than it was before without these airbags. So much different. I want to share something else with you about the dipstick. I modified it. So I went in and I flattened it out. So it's much easier to read oil level now. And at the top where this hash mark is, that's just below the windage tray. So I know exactly where that is. So it's after, this is post trip. And uh, according to this, I'm right at the windage tray, so I'm good. Update viewers, I just got done doing about 900 miles of towing with the truck, with the new airbags. Uh, I have a car dolly in the Civic. I took the uh, TL with me up to New York uh, to give to my son to drive while I work on this one. TL's heavier by about 1,200 pounds. I could feel that one back there. The Civic, it's like there's nothing back there until you start hitting the brakes. When you're towing with these car dollies like this, your brakes are doing most of the work. There's a surge brake on them, but that's usually like when you really spike the brakes or anything like that. I just remember coming down a couple of hills and I could really smell my brakes. I was behind somebody going slower. Uh, but the airbags, flawless. Truck was flawless. Truck with car dolly and Civic, no problem at all. Um, not worried about that. Heavier stuff, eh, eh, but still. My truck did great, ran great. Um, small oil leak, I'm not sure what that is. I'm gonna have to suss that out. But anyway, uh, I've been on the road for almost 14 hours now. I'm a little tired. Oh, and one last thing about car dollies as opposed to uh, car trailers. It's almost impossible to back these things up. They crumple up like a piece of paper because where the front of the car is on the trailer articulates and then your steer your wheels can turn a little bit too so it makes it all weird and like i said virtually impossible to put into reverse to try and keep the steering wheel from moving around i put the steering wheel holder underneath the steering wheel on the car i was towing it was virtually useless um, your best bet is to try to lock it into position in some way um, but i tried this it didn't work too great but anyway that's an update truck did great Airbags did great. Have a nice day. Be safe. Have fun. Stay dirty. See ya. I've said it 20 times during the course of this video. This is a vast improvement over what it was when I first took it out. Um, airbags, I'm sold. Way to go. Would air shocks do the same thing? I don't know. Uh, I didn't get them for this truck because I've lowered the truck four inches in the rear and it's a little tricky trying to find shocks, air shocks for a lowered vehicle because they have to be shorter. Uh, otherwise you'll bottom them out and mess them up and that type of thing. But the airbags uh, that I got were specifically for lowered trucks and well, they seem to be working quite well. In fact, I'll post a link to that down in the description. Be mindful of what your truck is capable of towing. You don't want to overload the truck or overload your trailer or anything like that. I feel comfortable at this level. How comfortable I'd feel towing the 51 with this truck, I'm still somewhat on the fence with that. I'm a lot more confident now. I, I have no trouble with a car trailer in a Civic sized or maybe a little bit of a heavier vehicle, maybe the Fairmont, you know, if, if it came down to it. Like say I went to the racetrack and the Fairmont broke and I needed to get it home, I might just go this route and, you know, put it up on the trailer like this and bring it back here to the shop and fix whatever's broke. So I've got that. But a longer wheelbase definitely helps as far as the stability of the truck, but keeping the suspension uh, like it is now and not with the front end up in the air, night and day difference. I, I, I can't stress that enough, but 
please be safe when you do this kind of stuff. But I hope this is at least giving you some insight into what adding airbags to your truck can do for it. And it certainly helped me out. Anyway, once again, links in the description to additional information. Link also in the description to ericthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have automotive questions. Other than that, thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time. I had fun, Did you have fun? Come back next week, we'll have more fun.